Welcome to Don't Quote Me On That. One day we will have an intro, but today is not that day. Hi, this is Eleanor. And this is Kalina. And welcome back to Don't Quote Me On That, where we kind of talk about movies. But really, whoever has an idea first gets to pick what we talk about, usually. And it's never a movie is the problem. Um, I mean, she has been in movies. That is true. Multiple her song movies. Has, has her, have her songs been in movies? I know her songs are like in a TV show now. Yeah, I think she has a song for, I don't know, some Netflix show, maybe. Excuse She's got songs in movies. It's a crime show, and it's called oh. The Thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Something about the, the summer. Time. The summer I turned pretty, I think. Yes. Unclear about what the plot of that show is. I know that there are three boys three i believe so i thought there were two and that they were brothers oh well i thought i saw a tiktok about like some clothing store that did um like a collab with the show and there were three shirts that said like team da 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 and usually you don't uh, be a team yeah. for like like no one was making team bella shirts and if they, they did you probably didn't want to attack them team um Therapist. It's Bella and a therapist. <laughs> she needed one. She uh, needed yeah, like I don't know. three. But um, okay. I have mixed feelings about Taylor Swift. You, or would you? Cause I know. I know. I think we've answered this question before, but I will ask it again for the sake of the viewers and also me a little bit. Would you consider yourself a Swifty? Um, that is a complicated question because I wouldn't say that I'm a Swifty in the sense that I like actively participate in any fandom type things Mm -hmm. um other than like sometimes a TikTok um but I am in the sense that I keep up with her music and I like it I just like I'm a fan but I don't think I'm a an active fan if you if you can say that that makes sense yeah but like I did uh, tell everybody at work um, once upon a time that I was going to get tickets for the Eras tour because um, it was my birthright. And while I think that's a little dramatic, I did get a tickets. Little um, so, you know. So unfortunately, you have not been proven exactly. wrong. Exactly. All right. Well great for us have you i i have a question are there any albums you can like remember where you were when you listened to the first listen to it for the first time or like you know you can remember your very first interaction with it yes there are two the first will shock no one it is hell freezes over by the eagles um that's a great album oh my god i got that memorized back to back (laughs) And then the other one is... I don't actually know what the name of the album is. It's a Tracy Chapman album, though. And it's the one with the flower on it. I will look it up for you all. Um, But it's got this song, Remember the Tin Man, on it. And we used to play that CD so much that it started to skip. But it was okay because when my parents met each other, they both had a copy of the same, like, that same CD. So we just started playing the other one. Oh... Isn't that cute? That's cute. That is very cute. Um, there's a couple of fun. Um, uh, the song, the album's called New Beginning. Found a sunflower on the mm-hmm. front. Very okay. good album. Ten out of ten. I think Tracy Chapman is a genius. I would have to agree with that one. I saw there's like this big thing going on now that like, some what is it? Luke Combs, I think his cover mm-hmm. of Fast Car, is on the country charts or something, and it's like the first time a african-american woman or black i don't know if she's african-american but a black woman is like on it has a songwriting credit credit on a chart on the country on a song on the country charts oh. wow. um and then a lot of people were like his cover's not even that good it's just it's a really good song <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to make that song bad you know 
Which it, I would agree. it is. It's a it's a great song, and as long as your voice is like stable, you're you're doing pretty well. Um, mine was it was Christmas in 2010. I was mm-hmm. 11 years old, and I was gifted the deluxe CD where she's wearing a red dress of "Speak Now" by Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. And. I proceeded to only listen to this album for, I'm telling you, probably two months. And then after that, it was still in heavy rotation. So this this album... Was a long time coming for you. Was a long time coming for me. And I also have just very strong feelings about it. And so I was very very wary coming into it um like good I would strong like to feelings hear... in terms of like the original album or do you mean like strong feelings in terms of the re-recording or just both i have strong feelings on both okay and sometimes they're the same strong feeling and sometimes they're the direct opposite strong feeling okay well i'm interested to hear um, my little segue was I, as I said, I have mixed feelings about Taylor Swift. I think she's fine, right? She's a singer. She's a songwriter. Sometimes she got a song that's a banger. You know, that's bound to happen. Yep. Um. However, I did notice when I was looking at the track list of this album, at least the re- the Taylor's version, it does have a couple of songs on there that I would put in, in um, like, they're on my playlist. They would I would consider them my favorite Taylor Swift songs. Um, we've got in- Haunted, which I think is just a masterpiece of mm-hmm. songwriting. Absolutely. 100%. Um, it, uh, it is. I'm a Dear John stan now. We did an episode a while back about Eleanor, uh, not Eleanor, about Taylor Swift's, what was it, track fives or her track sevens? Track fives. Check fives. Um, so I'm a dear John girly now. I get it. Um, that chorus gets stuck in my head sometimes. But I I just think she's fine. So I was listening to this and I like especially the songs I'd known before, and this album I would say is like the general theme is kind of not sad, but it's a little melancholy overall. Mm-hmm. And I don't th- and they're all love songs, obviously. And I don't think if I had listened to this any other day it would have affected me as much but yesterday um i got involved in my friend proposing (laughs) to his girlfriend so like that was just the fact that it was happening was sprung on me and then a couple hours later it was happening and his little like i don't know it was really cute okay i don't know if you've ever seen an engagement in person that was the first time that happened to me it was really cute so i was a little like i was listening to this and i was like it would be nice to have someone to love in the home. Oh no! I'll be there with you, but I was totally chill and normal about it anyway. Yeah, that's that's the I'm getting super chill, super normal vibes right now. Actually, it's not my fault. It was just bad timing for me. <laughs> anyway, that was my. Did segment. you have? Um, since you mentioned this song specifically, I just. For for curiosity's sake, how often do you, would you say that you listen to the regular version? Or sorry, not the regular version. The the original version of Haunted. Like, is that a song you would say you were very familiar with? Yes. And and what were your first thoughts on the the new version of Haunted? Well, Eleanor, we will get to that. And I wrote oh, are we going down. in order? Well, oh, I'm I, so sorry. I would like to. We can, We don't have to. Okay. Whatever you want to do. This is Eleanor's show today, guys. Well, you know, um, someone else had a solo show for two weeks in a row. I don't know who those people were, but that is they would correct. like a break. <laughs> oh, we can go in order if you would like. Nah, dude. Whatever you want. I don't care. Okay. What did so, you like? Haunted. <laughs> yes. Um, let me find my notes here. On haunted. It is track twelve. Yes. If thank that you. helps. Okay. So earlier in the album, I wrote, um, she's fine. As I said, mixed feelings on Taylor Swift. I think I don't get the hype, you know, I don't get why people are like such devoted fans of her. I get like Mm -hmm. every, every artist in the world is going to have fans that have a, 
I don't want to say abnormal, but that have a, a not excessive, but have like a, a higher than average level of devotion. That's of course going to happen. But like the to the level it's at, I don't understand. I think, like I said, like sometimes I'm like, yeah, she is a really good songwriter. But again, when you write as when you write as many songs and you've been writing songs for as long as she has, I would expect that like at least once an album you're having a song that's like got really good writing in it, you know. Mm-hmm. Especially if you are a singer songwriter. Then I got to haunted, and I said, "I take it back. She's a genius. I love this song. <laughs> I, I think the song is great. Like I was trying really hard to listen for differences, and I personally didn't notice too many. I didn't. The only time I noticed a difference was." In her voice, obviously it sounds older when she says something keeps me holding on to nothing. I did notice a difference there. But other than that, I was vibing. I think this is a great song. I have no complaints. You didn't think the, the, the instrumental was different? Eleanor? I was going to like <laughs> sit down and like listen to the ones I knew. I was going to like listen to the original before. And then I was like, that's a lot of work. I'm not doing that. So, like, was it probably, yes. Did I just get really hyped because I like this song? Also, yes. I only bring it up because that was the first thing I noticed is that the instrumental were different. And I... It didn't um, feel as, as like, heavy. There's no... There's less oomph. Yeah. Like, I just... I think because I listened to it in order, though, I I did notice this in the first song. It was the, the um, what is the first one? To mine, it felt a mm-hmm. lot quiet. Like that one sounded quieter to me than what I remember it sounding like. So I feel like this this album overall was a bit like not tamer, but a bit more like slower, quieter. It 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 was, and I really, it just it just really upset me. I will be honest. I think it's That's because fair. this is like, I have the most. Um, affinity for this album generally mm-hmm. but um, actually can you just take me through your notes I think I'd enjoy that because I don't okay. have a lot to say about every single song but if you have notes I would love to hear them and I can just oh, jump in I was in. doing this with the assumption you'd have a lot to say but I'll, I'll start from the beginning I have a lot to say about, about certain things. songs okay so I'll start Other with songs mine I'm okay with. I'll start with mine that's the um, the first one on the album like I said, it feels a lot quieter to me, at least, in, especially in that first verse when she comes in. Um, I did, like, there was, like, a little sort of, like, dun, dun, dun. When, like, it was, like, just the drums when she's singing the cho- chorus. And she says, you put your arms around me for the first time. They're kind of, like, you know, it's just the drums. And then she says, and you are the best thing that's ever been mine. They do that again. So I like that little, I thought that was a nice little bit. Um, and I liked, I noticed this for the first time narratively in the bridge when um, she says that he said, I remember you sitting there by the water. So I really, I thought it was really cute that to them to like both of them separately that was a definitive moment in their relationship was sitting by the water because she's saying this throughout the song but i mean those were in the lyrics the first time so like i just happened to notice this time (laughs) mine is it's a pretty good song it's a good album opener i think also yes i think so i think it, it gives especially with the theme of these songs and like the tone of them overall it's it's like a nice it's nice little it's not too slow and it's not too heavy like i wouldn't like haunted is good but i think if you i, I think you should start with haunted just because i think it's a good song but i think starting with mm-hmm. haunted would give you a different expectation for the rest of the album um and then i really like the line which again was in the song before and every time i look at you it's like the first time i thought that was she thinks cute like i said i was being a little emo about relationships so <laughs> everything was getting me yeah, that's a really that's a really interesting time to have to listen to that. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell my friends they have to play Speak Now and Taylor's version at their wedding. That's the song they have to play? No, just any of them. Just something Okay. Okay. They can take their pick. Okay. I think it would be kind of a, a girl boss move to have her walk down the aisle to the song speak now. This would be like daring somebody to say something, <laughs> you know? No, I think we need to play it better than Revenge. Oh, yes. But do you Which, have any thoughts that, about mine? That's a song I have. It's a stand-up song. I think some of these songs I either didn't really notice too much of a difference or I liked it. Um generally yeah, i didn't notice too much song. of a difference like i said i noticed like it was at first but like after the chorus it kind of picked up a bit a bit and then i didn't notice too much of a different instrumentally from the original that's fair enough and mine isn't a track that i've like i i would say is as deep-seated as some of these for me no 
My, mine is one I, of the ones I knew before. I didn't know every single one of these songs before, but mine is one of the ones I knew before. But it, I would this wasn't like on my playlist or anything. That yeah, that tracks. So, right. Sparks Number fly. Two, Sparks fly. I like the way she says smile. I hadn't heard this one before. I like the way she says smile on because I see sparks fly whenever you smile. And then she sounded very country tailored to me when she said, I really wish you would before the second chorus comes in. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I just, it was the way she said would. It was something about it. Um, and then she says, give me something that'll haunt me when you're not around. And guess what song is also on this album, folks? <laughs> <laughs> is it haunted? Ding, 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 ding. You're the winner. Thank you very much for participating. Um, and then I really like the bridge in this song. They kind of like have these halftime drums going. And so I like a good halftime drum moment. I like when a bridge is also sort of a breakdown moment in the song, if that makes sense. Like they change the tempo. Because sometimes they just like change it a little bit. But like I thought this was a definitive enough change. That I thought it was neat. Yeah, this song's a banger. It's it's good on both versions. This song is just so cute. <laughs> And it's very like uh, it's very like you know, falling in love, coded. I'm so sorry I said the word coded. <laughs> it's literally just no, about listen, falling in love. I might be an idiot. Fine. We went to media school, encoding and decoding, Stuart Hall. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're academics. Thank you, Kalina. We Thank are academics. Now. Okay, everybody, prepare yourselves. It's Kalina's turn <laughs> for depression. This song oh. is called "Back to December." This song makes me sad. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Oh, is that? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, those, are, those are the important statement? points. Yeah, just, just <laughs> in general. Thank, yeah. Um, back to December, I used to have this one running on a loop. Okay, don't ask me why. Had I ever had my heart broken? Had I ever broken anyone's heart? No. But, like, I, like, remember the video, you know? I used to watch this. What was it? Mm-hmm. White Horse? Yeah. Oh, God. You should double the, feature. Yeah, well, one was, like, she was heartbroken, and then one she was, like, that's my bad for breaking your heart, you know? However, I noticed a difference in this, and I don't know what it was specifically. To me, I, the first thing I noticed was her voice, but for some reason, I just got the vibe that this version was more mature, and not in the sense of, like, vocally she's gotten older, but in the sense that, like, I feel like in Back to December before, it was, like, I'm really sorry, like, I... I I broke your heart and I totally understand if you don't want to talk to me or see me but it kind of felt like there he, she was hoping he would and they would get back together whereas in this one I felt it was very much like a lot of time had passed she's like I'm very sorry and that's the only reason she's reaching out is just genuinely to apologize so it felt a little bit mature more mature to me I would have to agree I think I noticed changes in this one but I, they were good changes and this song is just so like, if it ever rains and I'm driving and this song comes on, oh, I'm done. Man. Eleanor was raining while I was listening to this album. I was just oh, double no. whammy. I was having a horrible, like, a good time, but a horrendous time. <laughs> a good time, but an awful time? Yeah. And then, um, also the build-up to the final chorus is, like, is so good. I like when oh. you do, like, a nice little, like, building to the crescendo. Beautiful. Masterpiece of a song. I like it that. Really is. This is another one on my playlist. No, I don't blame you at all. It's so good. Um, speak now. <clears throat> speak now. Number four. This is the song equivalent of making the quote unquote wrong person awful so you can root for the main couple. So, you know, like in movies, like, what is it? My best friend's <laughs> wedding or whatever. <laughs> it is because she opens up and she's, she talks about how, like how she walks into the wedding and the bride is like yelling at people. Right. So like off the bat, you're like, we hate the bride. She sucks. Right? Which, like, they do that in, like, rom-coms from the 2000s all the time. Is like, he's with the wrong girl. And, but you have, like, but you don't, you feel bad if the if the wrong girl's a nice person and you have to let her down. So you gotta make her suck. You know what I mean? So this is the <laughs> song equivalent of that. And she just, like, came out the bat. So it was, like, the, that's, like, the third or fourth line in the song. Right? Um, and not to be all, this song wouldn't be made in this day and age. But, like, why are we writing songs about interrupting people's weddings? There's a time and a place to do things. That ain't it. I must be now apologist. Uh, listen, unfortunately, I'm not surprised. 
I think if I could get off my moral high ground for like two minutes, I might like it. But I am very <laughs> much a like, like I feel like I don't even like it in movies when like it's like the night before the wedding and they're like, I just have to tell you, you didn't know this before right now. And then, like, what? listen, what, like, what is your plan here? Okay, listen, best case scenario, they're going to run off with you. There's a whole wedding plan. There's someone's heart who's being broken. There's, like, money being lost. Or they're not going to run off with you. They will never speak to you again. And then you're like, I just, like, I know it might not change your mind, but I just had to let you know. For what? That's so selfish to do because that person has to live with that for the rest of their lives. For no reason. You could have just kept it to yourself. You know how you were keeping it to yourself the whole time before this? But they're in love. Aren't they? He's marrying someone else. <laughs> I I do not I get mean, the... Like, it's not clear to me from this song that he's in love with her. I, I see your point. But also... True love trumps all. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. When it's reciprocated. And it's reciprocated because the song made the album. Obviously, (laughs) if it didn't turn out well, she wouldn't have taken the song off the album. Fine. I'm not a fan of apologist. I hate this trope in movie. Also, Taylor Swift did this. She interrupted a wedding in a show when she was a new girl, um, which just makes this song better to me because, unfortunately, I am one of new girl's biggest fans. See, that's kind of funny. But, like, it, like again, I the song was fine. It was a Taylor Swift song. You know what I mean? Um, but, like, if I had to pick something that, like, stood out to me, I didn't really get past the I don't like this trope part. Okay. So, that's... I didn't have any complaints like lyrically or instrumentally. It was a song. <laughs> you just couldn't get past it. Yeah, 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 that was kind of my only. That was the only thing to me worth noting. You know. Fair enough. I disagree, but fair enough. <laughs> that's what the show's about. Also, that's we've agreed true. for like way too long, so we have to disagree at some point. That's true. We need to some uh, some conflict here. Da, da, da. Anyway, I will fight anyone. Unfortunately. That's a good idea. I was going to say, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have a lot of conflict. Oh my god, no. Hello. I'm a Dear John stan. Eleanor converted me. I was like, maybe Taylor Swift. Maybe I get it. Okay. This song is so good. Wondering. And then also, I like, I'm like thinking about the layers here. Okay. This is another song. I hadn't added this on my playlist yet, but I thought I did. Um, After we did the, the Taylor Swift track five episode. And... I like how she sets it up the same way I think it would be in this scenario where she's, like, calling him or writing these letters or whatever. Where he might be like, this is so out of left field. Like, why are you breaking up with me? Because if he's not, he's not paying attention. But, like, if you pay attention, she says, wondering which version of you I might get on the phone. So, like, this is not, like, an out of left field thing. She's been thinking about this. He's been doing things to, like, push her to this decision. Um, but, like, it's easy to miss if you're not paying attention, which he's not doing, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. And then also, I started to notice a little theme here, which will come up later. Um, she says, I'm shining like fireworks over your sad, empty town, versus sparks, get it? Sparks fly. (laughs) And then there's, like, a, there's, like, a little spark and, like, firework theme later in the album. And, listen, the line, don't you think I was too young, gets stuck in my head regularly, and I just I get equally upset about it every single time. Fully agree. No notes. I'm very interested about what you have to say about Mean, because I have some things to say about Mean. I loved Mean when I was younger. That was another one I listened to a lot. It's fun, and I think I was talking about this recently. Because there was a point I had made about this band, Set It Off, that I didn't realize until I said it to you, actually, when we were recording, in that, um, in the episode we did on songs, all titled Punching Bag, the songs Mm -hmm. are the same name, and I realized Set It Off, write a lot of songs where, like, you're not the bigger person, like, the person is going low, so you're going lower, sort of vibe, and, like, sometimes 
you want to feed into that. You know, like, someone wronged you. And every once in a while, it's okay to be like, you know, no, it's not okay. And I'm not going to get over it. And no, I don't forgive you. Sometimes you need to say that. And so I feel like mean, like, I was thinking about me listening to it younger when I was younger. No one ever bullied me. But I did feel very alone. And I think that mean is a very validating song in that sense of, like, saying to people who count you out or like you know who don't get you or whatever that like all like one day I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I want to do and I'm gonna live my dreams and all you're gonna you're just gonna be the same person you always were so and I I really like the bridge of this song um when they're talking about like how you're gonna be you know years from now you're gonna be at a bar and still going on about the same thing which is me you're drunk and grumbling (laughs) about how I can't sing and I appreciate her not going overboard on that I can't sing note because that would have been a moment to do it and I wouldn't have appreciated it. I I would have loved like a like a Trisha Paytas style run on, <laughs> <laughs> on the nope. word sing. I would have skipped the song at that point. I agree. I my one thing I think um this mean isn't as twangy as the other one. Yeah. Which kind of upset me. Um, I do like twangy mean, yeah. But, Isn't, I you like know, country Taylor. it's still a bop. I love Country Taylor. Oh, we could go home. But, next song, I have one note, it's gonna make Eleanor sad. <laughs> this is the story of us. And in this song, she says, I used to know my spot was the place next to you. And now she's like, and then she's like, now I'm standing alone in a crowded room, blah, 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 blah. I don't know where you are, right? Um, And then I heard the line, I used to know my spot was the place next to you. But now I don't know where to stand because Eleanor has left me. Uh, we're never together in the same room anymore. So I don't know where my place is. Thank you. I'm totally normal. Whatever. There's a fun new context for you to listen to that song with. Yeah, that's going to um, not be very fun for me. Thank you very much. I was talking the other day about how the worst part of the year I lived in Ireland without you was having to go to the grocery store alone. Oh, it's the worst. (laughs) I hate going to the grocery store, but like at least you were there to talk to. I know. There was some collaboration. Oh my God, I forgot butter. I'm taking Eleanor's because I know she bought it because I saw her. Mm Mm-hmm. But I can't Oh yeah. I didn't. There were a couple of things I didn't buy my entire college experience because I have, don't think I bought a tortilla the last like year. Because <laughs> Eleanor would always buy a pack and then use one and then just leave Forget. them there. So I was like, can I, can I have those? Please, because mm-hmm. those things go hard fast. And I was a big quesadilla maker. That was my uh, go-to. And we are moving quickly on actually from that story. We're moving very quickly on to the next song. Okay, I no have reason. to um, admit that. I will let you move on really quickly in the interest of time. Um, I did not listen to Never Grow Up, Taylor's version, because when I was listening to this album, I was not in the right state of mind to be listening to that. Um, so I have absolutely nothing to say. Um, okay, I d- thought this song was okay. Um, I like this, the line, To you, everything's funny. You got nothing to regret. I have never, like, in my life heard of this song, also. Um, so when I first realized what the theme was about, I thought it was kind of like Ronin vibes. And I do like that song. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, she says, to you, everything's funny. You got nothing to regret. And like something I really like when people uh, magnify the, the joy of being young and and not clueless, but like, you know, just experiencing things for the first time. Because up to a certain point everything you experience will be for the first time whereas obviously as you get older you're more familiar with things so you know ah oh, to be young i agree that that's why i couldn't listen to that song <laughs> <laughs> like i had never heard that song or heard of it in my life so i was like is this new but i don't know no it's not uh, next song nope. i do like enchanted um i thought it was one of the ones i knew before but um i think this is the one like i heard you know like I don't know, the, like, bridge or, like, the ending chorus a bunch of times. Um, I said, why is she always at a party? Okay? Because in Story of Us... She does go party. to a lot of social Love story. Parties. Like, and then I we I also talked about this when we did the last Taylor Swift episode, how I really like that her, she has a, like, reoccurring theme of, like, kind of royal princesses, that sort of vibe. And I think she, like, keeps in touch with kind of the childlike wonder or like the 
the rose colored glasses, this like innocence that comes along with falling in love with someone. I think it's a very magical moment that could kind of re not reduce you, but like kind of, for lack of a better word, reduce you to a younger state, if that makes sense. Because you're experiencing it for the first time. I think falling in love is something that every time you do it, it's still different and new because it's a new person. And it's going to be mm -hmm. a different way every time. So like, in that sense, I think the party thing kind of is like, like a love story, you know, like a, like a party, a ball, that sort of shebang but like this girl all is always at a party right anyway all of that said then i liked how this was quiet and as soon as i said that the chorus came in and then i was like i got lost we lost me here i didn't like the change <laughs> i thought it should have stayed quiet um but i did really like the repetition of it was enchanting to meet you because i think it very did a very good job of visualizing and putting down on paper i suppose the how you feel when like you have a brief interaction with someone like you have a crush on them let's say or you're like thinking about it the next few days but like you only have like so much to work with right so she keeps fixing it on like it was enchanting to me like this is what i would have said if we spoke this is what i would say to you if you showed up at my door right now even though it was like this brief thing that really it's kind of hard to make a big thing out of and then back to my fireworks and sparks fly theme she says this night is sparking so i'm on to you taylor swift I could write a Taylor Swift song. Balls, parties, fireworks, boom, watch me. <laughs> I mean, you, you're you allowed to write a Taylor Swift song. I just um, won't need to be the first to hear it. Thank you. Yeah, obviously. You're my co-writer. You're my producer. Oh, I have to help? Oh, I can you're, produce. I'm Taylor, and you're... What's that guy's name? Jack? Yeah. Jack Antonoff. Dream Team. Um, I would like to go first for the next song, if you are... If you are okay with that. Well, do you have any thoughts on Enchanted? Um, nothing that you didn't say. I think it's a lovely song. I think it's so sweet. Um. Yeah. Okay, fine. I guess you can go. Okay. I have my own individual and unique thoughts and feelings about the lyric change in Better Than Revenge. That said, they don't particularly matter and i need to stop having other people share their ideas because there are really only three camps there's i liked it i didn't like it and people wouldn't have been happy no matter what she did so she already did something so shut up and i'm very much in the she would have people i feel like not very many people would have said things if she kept the lyric because it's not that big of a deal, but like people would have said something. There would have been a small group of people that were upset. There are obviously people upset that she did change the lyric and like it already happened. You're going to have to get over it. Yes, it's stupid. Yes, you can just listen to the regular version if you didn't like it, which is what I will do. And I also need people to stop pretending that listening to the, the original version of this song is some kind of great personal slight against Taylor Swift. Um, because yes, she should own her own songs because she's the one who created them and put them out. Um, but also sh she's okay. She is going to be a billionaire probably in, in the next couple of years. Uh, me not streaming one song is not gonna, um, hurt her pockets at all. She's going to be fine. It's, it's not the moral stance you think it is. It makes you look a little weird. But that said, this is one of my favorite songs, which is why I'm so upset that she changed it. I tweeted because oh. I saw a lot of discourse about Better Than Revenge. And after it came out, I was waiting for after it came out to confirm my suspicions. And I tweeted, I am so sorry. There was no universe in which Taylor Swift was going to give us what we thought we wanted, what we wanted, right? Because, as Eleanor said, if she had left the lyric as is, there would have been people who were up in arms about it also for reference for those of you who don't know i don't know how you don't know if you made it this far in the episode but it, if you don't know <laughs> the lyric is she's better known for the things that she does on the mattress wow. and she changed it to something that was dumb basically um that was less i guess slut shamey he was a was moth particularly 
Yeah, um, the new lyric is, he was a moth to the flame, she was holding the matches. Whoa. As I said, something stupid. Um, mm-hmm. And Taylor Swift really said, would I prefer to be cancelled for slut shaming or for the carbon emissions my private jet releases? <laughs> and she firmly picked her camp, didn't wait for anybody to answer her question. And moved on herself. Because someone would have been mad. I think I agree with Eleanor in the sense that I think... I don't think it would have been that many people. But, like, you know, there's always... Especially, like, younger generations. And I think... We talked about this, the not last week. I guess it was two weeks ago. The last episode we did together. Um, how, basically, I think it's both good and bad that people are held more accountable for things now. Because I think we let... We don't let things slide as easily but at the same time smaller things kind of get blown about of proportion so i think young younger people who maybe weren't around when the song first came out or people who like just didn't know the song and were in that space at the time would have been upset but i don't think it would have been that detrimental and as eleanor said even if those few even if she had left the lyric right and let's say those few people were like well i'm not listening to taylor swift she would have been she'd be fine Mm -hmm. right um I thought the line change was stupid. It felt awkward. Like, I don't think it fits the timing very well. Yeah, it's it's clunky. Yeah. And it's too poetic for how petty the rest of the song is, you know? Yeah, this song is very much a I'm going low song. It's a, it's a fun song. It's not, I don't think it's meant to be very serious. Just another, like, if she was seriously writing, sitting there writing the song about how, you know, she's going to get this man back but like it was a serious tone then yeah i could understand the issue of the song but like it's not a serious tone song at all mm-hmm. however i was trying to find something redeeming here and there was like sort of a ra- she's like got layered vocals and um i think in the second chorus after the after that first part i'm sorry after the first chorus um she's got like these layered vocals on it it's got this like radio staticky effect on it and she says because i liked oh, when she says she thinks i'm psycho because i like to rhyme her name with things the backing vocal on that has that little staticky effect, and I thought that was cute. And she kept that up for like the rest of that verse. Yeah, the song's the song is very fun sonically. Yeah, and it's also but yeah, I boo don't... for the line change. But yeah. I don't know what. Well, I do. But it's also happen. like yeah, you can't always get what you want, and unfortunately, Taylor Swift did not ask me directly. I wish she had, but. <laughs> It's like it's exactly like I think if she had done a poll, more people would have been like, just leave the line alone, like. Because it's not like she by by making this version, she's erasing the original off the face of the planet. We all still heard her say those words, you know. Yeah. So. Like, and it's a lot different. She has another song where one of the lines is, um, you know, you can go tell and your tell your friends that I'm crazy. It's fine. I'll tell mine that you're gay. I feel like that's like changing yeah, that, that, which I'm I... sure she's. Which she already has. Yeah. Like, that's a very different situation. That one, I totally get why. Like, again, that's another, like, going low. But I think that one's a little bit more serious mm-hmm. in terms of the tone of the song. And then the sentiment itself is more serious. So I agree with changing that. I would totally get why she does that. But this one was, like... I mean, like, it was factual. It wasn't like she was, like, making things up. Like, the whole point of the song was... That's how the girl steals your man. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like she was just conflating, like, you know, just saying that to say it. I agree. Anyway, we're not women's rights activists. No, we're, we're really not. not. We're hardly women. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fun story. Um, This has nothing to do with anything, but I'll tell this story. Anyway, yesterday I got to say in public, in every way but legally, she's my wife. And then the person I was saying this to said, what? And I said, yeah, she's my wife. And then I moved quickly on with the rest of my story. Because the trick is you say that and then you don't give them a chance to ask follow-up questions. Yeah. Because people do have follow-up questions and I can't see why. It's a very clear statement. Yeah, because someone was like, oh, do you do your podcast with this other, this mutual friend of ours, right? And I was like, oh, no, it's um my friend in, I'm going to go visit. Because I was telling her about how I'm going to come to Arizona. And I was like, oh, it's, no, it's my friend I'm going to go visit in every way. But legally, she's my wife. What? Yeah, she's my <laughs> wife. So we've been doing this podcast together. <laughs> anyway, next song. Next song. 
Uh, do you want me to go there first? There are so many songs. Yeah. Oh, Eleanor, there's so many songs. I did. To and be I, fair, this time I did. I gave you like four or five that that you really had to hit yeah. on. I tried yeah, to make I it know. easier. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um. Sorry. My. I, I just hit my fit. Like, what is this thing called? Lamp. Whole bunch of oh. stuff came off. Anyway. Jeez. Um. Innocent. Actually, I think you should go first for this song. Oh. I mean, I think looking back on this song, it's kind of hilarious. I like this song. Um, but like, also, it's um, it's very dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are going to hate me for this one, okay? And it could be because we are 11 songs in. I'll, I'll tell you which songs kind of sound the same. <laughs> That's not in a bad way, because sometimes songs sound the same, and, like, they sound like just the same exact song, whereas this, I just mean, like, they all sound, they got the same vibe going on, but I can differentiate their different songs, so I don't mean that as a bad thing, but, like, this and Never Grow, like, you could just kind of, like, a couple of these you could just click uh-huh. together, and I mm-hmm. wouldn't notice the difference, you know? Again, back that's back to the Kalina doesn't really get the Taylor Swift hype. I think she's okay. Um, but we did have another little fire soda moment. She says firefly catching days, and I thought that was close enough to count for my point. Um, I did like when she said, you'll have new Septembers. I thought that was nice because it just made me think of how like every year, every December after Christmas, those two weeks between Christmas and New Year's, I'm always like, you know, I'm in a very, like, always in a wildly different place than I was the year before so like I really like that sort of conceptualization of you'll have new Septembers and I had a question for you my Uh-oh. my darling dearest Uh-oh. moon to my stars Uh-oh. Um, what age, What did she say before 32 when she says like she's 32 now or whatever she says she says I'm uh, 32 life is, a tr- life is a tough crowd 32 and still growing up now no, I mean, like, what did she have? The, was this song on the original Speak Now? Yeah, because okay, it's about she, um, she, Kanye West. Yeah, but did she say 32 then? She wasn't 32 then, was she? Yeah, oh, she said 32 then, because he was 32. Ah, I thought yeah. she was right about her being, because I was Googling how old she was, and she's 33. So I was like, oh, maybe she was just, ah, see if that makes sense. Okay, I was wondering. Yeah, no, she's talking yeah, about I how. I would have figured it out. Kanye West was 32 when he pulled that um, no, award show stunt. Oh, well, that's, kind of, that's a fun little full circle then, because, like, she's 33 now, so, you know, mm-hmm. this little... Whoosh. Look at that. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Innocent. It sounds like a Taylor Swift song. If you would like to just run through your thoughts real quick, um, I have a couple to say about um, three of the From the Vault tracks, but if you want to run through yours in the interest of time okay um i don't remember what lo- in the, the end of the vault tracks were so hello um back to haunted i know we talked about it already but i would just like to reiterate banger of a song go listen to it um last kiss uh, oh i said that this and haunted could be about death and we all know i like making things about things they're not um <laughs> Because in Haunted, she goes, like, come on, you can't be gone, and things like that. Um, Something keeps me holding on to nothing. And in Last Kiss, um, she talks about, like, but I'll go sit on the floor wearing your clothes. And the nice emo... um, This makes me sad, and it's Eleanor's fault, okay? (laughs) Eleanor made a video that was a bunch of photos of us when I got my dream job playing professional water polo, okay? And I was several hundred miles away and Eleanor put a series of photos of us to the sound to the to the lyrics that go I'll watch your life in pictures like I used to watch you sleep not that Eleanor used to watch me sleep but Eleanor and I used to live together we spent a lot of time together yeah I never did that well I don't like the way you said that <laughs> I've watched Eleanor sleep a lot it's not because I'm a stalker it's because Eleanor when we're <laughs> hanging out falls asleep a lot. every five minutes Eleanor and I were in Hungary together for three days. I think half of my snaps from that time are her falling asleep. Eleanor said, we'll go to the store at 9 o'clock, okay? She's like, I'm just going to take a quick hour nap. This is like 6 p.m. 
eight thirty. I'm like, Eleanor, do you still want to go to the store? <laughs> no. I went back to sleep. <laughs> we're watching SNL together. She fell asleep. <laughs> we're eating dinner and watching. What were we watching? Velma together. She fell asleep. You can't take her anywhere. In my defense, I was sick. I was not feeling well. And how often do you get to see me? I was like, oh, too much. We limited time together, and you're sleeping. You're sleeping the hours away, and then you're gonna go back to Arizona and be like, I never see you. Well, maybe the <laughs> open eyes, dude. Okay. Oh, well, maybe if you were nicer to me, I'd want to. Sp- I want to be awake more. And we did go to the store. We did go to the store. I Wait, have to wake her up. There's but we made it. The store wasn't my idea. Okay. Anyway, all of that said and done. Um, I do like, I like that part of the song on the part before that, take it or leave it. Um, I do like when she says, I hope it's nice where you are. And I really, I don't know why I like this so much, but she says, you can plan for a change in weather and time, but I never planned on you changing your mind. And that one really got me a little bit because like, yeah, you can't plan for people. Oh, oh, wait, I remember. Ha 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 ha. I don't actually remember if it was this song, but the point is kind of similar. Um, I saw this thing one time that said, they were like, what's your biggest fear? And the person said that their biggest fear was like getting older and feeling like it wasn't worth it. Like how they wanted to die for years and they pushed through and then getting to like old age and being like, I shouldn't have like, I should have just died when I wanted to. Yada, yada, yada. And that's not my biggest fear. Don't worry. But my fear is I always preach. (laughs) It's it's in a similar vein in the sense that, like, I preach about how I like to be alone. And I promise you this is not just because I watched two people get engaged yesterday. Um, I've had this (laughs) thought before. Did Did this exacerbate the situation? Perhaps. But, like, I like being alone. I have no problems being alone. People are like, oh, who's your partner? I'm like, I don't have one. I mean, I do. But, like, not in that sense. You know, I don't have a romantic partner. I'm totally fine. I don't want a romantic partner. I don't want children. I don't see either of those two things changing. Um... In any drastic way, at least. I would like to, like, yeah, I'd like to be married one day, but it's not, like, a priority. It's not a necessity. It's not a, like, an end goal, so to speak, for me. And I'm very afraid of getting older and being, like, 40 or 50 and watching the people around me be in relationships and watch, like, my brother have have kids and stuff. And sitting there and feeling like I should have taken the chance to do that when I was younger. And not that it's too late when you're 40 or 50, but you know what I mean? Like, I would be starting from scratch in that sense when these people will have established relationships and marriages mm-hmm. and children and people around them and like a community around them. And I think I have a very good community around me now. But I think that comes along with the fact that because a lot of the people around me are my age and we're single and like, you know, make time for friendships where I think it's harder when you're older, you have to make time for your family. So it's hard to make time for the people that aren't in that immediate circle. So I'm very afraid of getting older one day and feeling like I wasted this time when everyone was telling me you should find someone which I I don't think it's going to happen but if if I had to say I was afraid of anything it would be that so her saying um you can plan for a change in weather and time but I never planned on you changing your mind for me I was thinking of that in the sense of myself as like years from now is oh I, I, I regret not changing my mind earlier but don't worry I don't want to die so it's okay just want to make that clear for everybody <laughs> I, I'm Glad to hear it. <laughs> but don't worry, I kind everyone, because I have a wife. I've had those thoughts before, but I always think, like, I would rather not have a kid and regret, later. like, yeah, what might have happened if I'd had a kid than have a kid and, and hate it. Yeah, I always say the worst time. I hate when people are like, I always kind of want, like, you have to want a kid so much. I hate mm-hmm. when people are like, oh, we, like, he really wanted kids and I was kind of on the fence or, like, vice versa or whatever. Because that's the worst time to figure out you don't want to have a kid is when you have yeah. one. And that's, like, not fair to the kid. That's not fair to you. That's not fair to anybody in that situation. Agree. Well, everybody pray for me that I won't regret my life of loneliness. Um, I mean, I don't think you're going to be lonely because I'm not going to leave you alone, so. Perfect. No, today I was talking to my brother about, like, how many kids he wants and stuff, and he was like, 
I don't know, just, I think if he got a partner, or if you got a partner, I'm not mentally prepared for either of those two adventures. So, just, as long as the two of you don't do it at the same time and everyone give me, like, a nice grace period to adjust before the next person gets in a relationship, <laughs> that would be super. Thanks so much. Now, do we have to, like, express our interest in, in writing? Or? No, just, like, as long as I get, like, a, I think, like, a week-long grace period to come to terms with it before y'all start, like, posting a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, that's good. Okay. All right. I need, like, Fair a week, week warning before you start shoving it in my face. Well, I don't know if you've heard of soft launches, but... No, I personally. I I need you to tell me first. Oh, even from a soft launch? It's like. Oh, in person? (laughs) I'll take a phone call, but it's going to have to be like a video call, okay? Um, It's like, you know how you should announce marriages and births and deaths? Like directly to your family members and don't let them find out online? That's the sort. I need um, relationships for you and my brother to also be on that same. Same spectrum. Okay. No. Yeah, that was last kiss. <laughs> Next song is called Long Live. I wrote Eh <laughs> Thank you. This is one of the songs that like the fandom as a whole it seems to be like generally pretty much adored and I it's it's not my favorite. You confused was the why? Me too. Yeah. It sounded like a song that Taylor Swift wrote and sang. Well, I've got maybe good, maybe bad news. It is and a song that Taylor Swift wrote and sang. <laughs> <laughs> um, ours. I think I like the video more than I like the song. I always really like this song in theory. And then I hear the song and I'm like, this doesn't live up to how it sounds in my head. It's a good song, don't get me wrong. I just think, like, in my head it's a lot. It's, like, haunted level in my head, and then in execution. Oh, yeah, it's not that. A bunch of steps down. Yeah. Good song, though. Video's very cute. The video's so cute. Do you have any... You want to hop it at any point? I'm gonna save it. I mean, we're we're an hour. I have to save it for for when it counts. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Superman, um, she says, I... The song was confusing to me, okay? i be honest, I don't think I listened to the whole thing. I might have skipped it after. That's fair. Point. It's I not a, you're not she missing much. She said so many times. So many um, times. It made me think of always, she says, I always forget to tell you that I love you or something like that. That made me think of Enchanted where she keeps repeating the, um, you know, if I, if, I, if I spoke to you that night, I would have said I was enchanted to meet you. If you came to my door right now, I was enchanted. So that part may, of always forget to tell you that I love you kind of made me, made a little connection there. Mm-hmm. That was Superman. Electric Touch with Fall Out Boy. I'm expecting something good. Oh, my God. Okay, this is what I was saving my, myself for. <laughs> okay, you can go, because I only have one note after that, and it's about a lyric, so I don't think I got what I was hoping for. Okay. I was expecting something good, and I think the problem is that this song, it was only written by Taylor Swift, and I think to have a really good Taylor Swift Fall Out Boy tell. song, they all needed to write it. This is just Fall Out Boy singing a Taylor Swift song, and it's not what I wanted. Yeah. And if she was going to do duets for this and not let the person that she's duetting with have a say in the lyrics of the song, she shouldn't have done it. We should have we should have done like a Fall Out Boy reputation song so that they could at least have an input on how it's written because I didn't need to have Fall Out Boy sing a Taylor Swift song. I already have Taylor Swift singing a Fall Out Boy song. We don't need it vice versa. Please do a real song together. Like, or pick a different artist. And not to say that every not every artist deserves to like have their input on a feature. But like some artists that maybe are more similar to her in style and less established in the community that they make music for could hop on a song, sing some lyrics Taylor Swift wrote and sound great and it not really be more than that. Whereas Fall Out Boy, we've talked about, or like, you know, they're like what the, the part of the emo Holy Trinity or whatever. They have defined the genre mm-hmm. as it is. Mm-hmm. So to have Fall Out Boy on your album just sing lyrics that you wrote from a very different genre than the music they make 
doesn't make any kind of sense. No. And the it worst was- part is, like, there are songs on this album that I think if that's the one that Fall Out Boy had been on, it would have worked. Like, some of the, yes. the, the harder songs, even, like, on Haunted or something, it's close enough. But this one, really... And, like, this fell right in line with me, which I always say I hate when when artists do a song and then they'll, like, redo the song with a feature. And the feature is just the person singing of, like, one of the verses from the original. Like, they don't add anything to the song. That's just, that's basically what you're doing here. Yeah. If she had this released exactly the song what you're doing here. before, and then this basically is Fall That Boy came in to feature on your re-recording of the song. But they're just singing the verse you wrote, so they're not adding anything. That's not fair to to us. That's not fair to Fall Out Boy. That's mostly not fair to me and Eleanor. Exactly. I know you're very concerned about that, Taylor Swift. Honestly, this album, this that song specifically, is what me made me realize that Taylor Swift does not care about me as a person. Up until I listened to that song, I genuinely, truly thought that Taylor Swift cared about me as a living, breathing human being. Um, <laughs> as she should. That's how I feel when people are like, I can't believe they she sung this song live as a secret song now i'm not gonna get it i love you so much i can understand being disappointed <laughs> she doesn't know you okay she doesn't know where you live she doesn't know where <laughs> she you really are doesn't say, she doesn't know what you bought tickets for so anyway that was a song that i will not oh that i will but will not be listening to again but i did like the line i'm trying hard not to look like i'm trying i thought that was nice but again let fall out boy right they're, yeah. just, they're good at it if listen if they are nothing else they're good at it um um no you go ahead oh I, are, are you good to move on yeah i have zero to say about when emma falls in love i think it's corny actually i'm so sorry Thank i have God. one thing to say i think it's so corny <laughs> move on i said eh i also didn't listen to all of this i think i walked away while this was playing yeah. what was the what was the point of this song who um, was emma the, i believe According to the the internet, it's Emma Stone. Oh. But also, Still, like... What was the point of this song? <laughs> she's like, if Cleopatra grew up in a small town, Taylor Swift, stop. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm talking about when I'm like, I don't get why people are like, she's such a fantastic songwriter, because she has really good lines. I've talked about some of them mm-hmm. here. This does not that, help. I think... No, I think she can write a good song. Cle- like she but like it's it's like when someone is trying to get something and they use a lot of buzzwords for whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Like let's say they're talking like they're talking about I don't know, they're like gender inequality in sport or whatever and they use they're like inequality, um gender imbalance, blah like they just use buzzwords to make it sound to like to like scare you and make it sound like they know what they're talking about sometimes when people are like oh she writes such good lyrics i'm like she just pulled out a bunch of words that sound nice yeah she said this Boom, one cleopatra throw oh. that in the line <laughs> she's she's like a a book but you don't want to stop reading it shut up <laughs> and like and like like that line and there's other lines i've heard people talk about i can't think of them right now where they're like, see, this is proof that she's such a good, like, songwriter. And nine, I'll say, like, 50% of the time, if not more, I'm like, I think if you gave any other pop artist a chance, they would have come up with that exact same line, or that exact same concept. Yeah. This is, and yeah, no, much. this is one of the worst. She's great, I'm, but like... like if my name was Emma, I would be really bummed out about this song. <laughs> I change it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this next song is one of the best things Taylor Swift has ever put out. Oh my god, I know. This, I was like, I might like this. This is what I wanted the Fall Out Boy to sound like. This is what yes. I wanted all the Vault songs to sound like. This, when I think about like the feeling that Speak Now Taylor or Speak Now evokes in me, it's this song. I thought this, because the one after this, Haley Williams is on, and I thought this was the one Haley Williams was on, I would have loved to hear her sing on this song. This had, like, the great, yes. like, haunted for me. Just, like, that, like, same vein. It feels like an older song. And not, like, the specifically an older Taylor Swift song, but, like, it feels like a song from, 
you know, years, like, years back, like, early Fallout Boy sort of time. Yeah. So, I just... I would believe that she wrote this song in, like, 2009 when, like, like, it was truly from a vault. Yeah, and, like, the delivery of I Can See, I thought this song Mm. was great. It gave, Mm -hmm. it made me feel the exact same way I felt when I heard Over and Out by Five Seconds of Summer when we did our perfect Five Seconds of Summer album, because I had never heard that song before, and it was just like this, and it wasn't even very heavy, but it was just like, it had a lot of bass, it just... Yeah, it's hit all the points good. I wanted it to. I was like, I didn't know you guys could do this. <laughs> I like this song so much. It's so good. I listen to "I Can See You." Please do. Close second to "Haunted" for me, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, absolutely. It's I it might be. It's my favorite off the album. Actually, it really is. "Haunted" got pushed down to number two. I think I would push "Haunted" to number two just because I'd heard it before, so it wasn't like fresh. Okay, but, fair like, enough a good song such a good song okay Um, next one castles crumbling i did not like it first and then i listened to it a couple more times i it's not as much of a letdown with fallout boy because i'm not as familiar with um paramore and halo williams but i was hoping this would sound like the paramore songs that i like but it's not a bad Mm -hmm. song uh, yeah, it's fine. I kind of felt the same way I did with the Fall Out Boy song in terms of... I, I just think Haley Williams has a fantastic voice. Uh, and I think we should let her sing more things. So I wish it sounded a little bit more her style just because I don't think it was doing her voice justice. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like the instrumentals post-chorus. And I would think we were falling back to the, the royal theme here with castles crumbling and that sort of terminology and stuff throughout the song. And I did like the delivery on falling down like promises I never kept. But I thought it was a little simplistic. And I, yeah, I really think it could have given Haley Williams more time to shine. I think Taylor Swift has a good voice. I don't think it's as good as a lot of her fans say it is. But I think, obviously, the style of music she writes really suits her voice and lets her show it off. So I just think it wasn't the right style to put Haley Williams on. Put Haley Williams on I Can See You. Put Haley Williams on. Like, have I Can See You 10-minute version, get Fall Out Boy in there, get Haley Williams in there. <laughs> like, come on. Stop being a coward. Like, you know when she did that collab with um, Ed Sheeran? Mm-hmm. The song she had Fall Out Boy and Haley Williams on, that was more like a, let's throw Ed Sheeran on here. You know? Mm-hmm. Let's throw... I don't know, like another pop star sort of in that vein from that time would have been a better pick. I agree. Like even like a a Vance Joy you could throw in there if you want to go real far back. And you let me know if this is too far. But you know how like sometimes people are like, oh, they just put this actor in this show because they're black and they needed to like (laughs) hit their like, you know, quota. It kind of feels like she was like, I'm just going to pick Fall Out Boy and Haley Williams to hit my quota. I don't know what the quota was for, but that was how I felt about it. I think the best thing for me to say here is um, <laughs> ask if you would like to move on to the next song. No, you can answer because remember when we used to... Actually, never mind. That, never mind. I'll take it. <laughs> Actually, never mind. <laughs> Foolish one. Bad. I don't remember too much about this song. However, I did like, I don't know what to call this situation, but I know I can't call you mine. I don't know. I just like that. And then I wonder if there were song references, because in the second chorus, she says something about mine, and then she says delicate, and then I don't know if Bulletproof was a song she wrote, but I just noticed mine and delicate, and they were really close together. So I was like, are these song references? But I don't know enough Taylor Swift songs to confirm or deny that. And then the other support for that was the song after this, which was the one song I didn't listen to, but it was called Timeless Taylor. So I was like, oh, that'd be kind of funny if she was like doing song references to herself and then having a song called Timeless Taylor. Or sorry, Timeless. Taylor's version. Yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah. You know. Um, I mean. uh, my main beef with Timeless is that Peach PRC has another song about the same thing and she did it so much better. Um, so much better. I'm like skimming through the lyrics here. It sounds boring. Down the block it is an antique shop and something in my head said stop so I walked in. Are you serious? This is who some people consider to be the greatest songwriter in the world. 
<laughs> full, full offense with that question. Black and white saw a 30s bride and two lovers laughing on the porch of their first house. Now, I know this is a little petty, okay? Oh, oh, oh wait. I didn't know this was this song. Okay, I saw a TikTok yesterday, I think. Because that's where I get all of my information, apparently. I'm not even on TikTok, TikTok that much. But anyway, moving on. I saw a TikTok yesterday. Um, or it, was, or it was on Instagram, so it was a reel. And they were like, me si- smiling along when Taylor sings these lines because I would not have been standing on a street in 1944. <laughs> she says, even if we met on a crowded street in 1944 and you were headed off to fight in the war. So now I don't feel bad about saying this line that I'm about saying what I'm about to say about the black and white bride, black and white thirties bride. I am always a little suspicious when someone references like an earlier time period, I'd say pre 70s if i'm being generous as like a romantic like a romantic period (laughs) or like they wish they met you then or something i am always a little bit kind of like i don't trust that person and i feel bad about saying that based on that one line but then she said even if we met on a crowded street in 1944 and you were headed off to fight in the war she said white feminism but made it make it romantic (laughs) <laughs> holding hands on the way to a dance and the date on the back said 1958 read the room oh my god she says if i first i'm sorry i didn't listen to this song and i wish i had if i first <laughs> saw your face in the 1500s <laughs> that's not even like a race thing women didn't have rights then she, the next line is and i was like to about to marry another man no no no. forced to marry another man. sorry forced to marry another man listen i'm a person of color okay so like i'm suspicious about y'all if you say anything <laughs> pre-70s. but like in the 1500s that was a bad time for women taylor swift that was a bad time for everyone there was like for everybody like racism is bad but at least in the 60s they had running water at least like not at least like, but like they were only discriminating against one group of people. Um, in the fifteen hundreds, they were discriminating. Like they were like, okay, Everyone. it's only skin color. Yeah, in the fifteen hundreds, mm-hmm. like also gender and also like, income and also. I like. Everything. I saw one TikTok that was really funny, and it said that Taylor Swift was never gonna sing this song in Germany. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. That, that was like one of the comments on the video I saw. But yeah, this song is bad, and um. Like, do what you want for your wedding, but please don't dance to this song. It's cringy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I wish I had listened to this song. I take back everything I said earlier about feeling bad about ragging on Taylor Swift. <laughs> what? Touch grass, no. dude. Oh, my God. Okay. I I think we need to stop. <laughs> that was the Touch, last song. Like, read the room, <laughs> man. <laughs> that could have stayed in the vault. It really could. You could have given us something like, give us I Can See You too, Electric Boogaloo, before you give us a title. <laughs> you know what the only good thing about that song is? And she didn't have a feature on it to, like, drag someone else down with her as she sang those words. You know what it was? It was, it was anyone she asked to be on that song was like, I heard the no, 1500 lines. That absolutely, absolutely not. not. <laughs> what part am I supposed to sing? <laughs> anyway... Oh Taylor Swift just undid every good thought I had that whole album in two lines. (laughs) Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. We'll be back next week and we might even talk about a movie. We definitely won't. We we won't. I appreciate the enthusiasm. (laughs) Bye, guys. Bye. Have a good night. Thanks for listening. Don't quote me on that. One day we'll have an outro, but it's not today.